Welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're in section 5.6 and we're talking about uh, finding the area between two curves. Now we've already talked about that integrals represent the area under a curve between the curve and the x-axis. We can just take this to the next level by doing the area in between two curves. So for example, if the upper curve was f of x and the lower curve was g of x and let's say I wanted to do the area between the two curves between these two spots. So I'm going to use my highlighter. All right, the area of f of x is all the yellow stuff, yes? And the area of g of x is all the green. All right, so we see how the yellow and the green overlap underneath g of x, right? So basically, if we do the integral of from a to b, f of x minus g of x, we will get the area in between the two curves. The key is always doing the greater function minus the lesser function. The greater function is higher on the y-axis. The lesser function is lower on the y-axis. All right. So that is the concept. Now it's just a matter of practice. So let's practice some. All right. All right, so here's our first example. Find the area of the region bounded by the graphs y equals x squared plus 2 and y equals negative x from 0 to 1. Now, the from 0 to 1 is extremely important because we're only looking at the curves between those two places. Realistically, there could be many other places where these curves change, um, which is greater and which is less, but we're only looking in the small piece. So in every problem, there should be some sort of an indicator as to where you're looking. All right. So to start, you know, until you get a feel for this, I think the best thing to do is just to graph it. Now it's going to take an extra minute and a half to sketch a quick graph because like y equals x squared plus two, we know it's a parabola. We know it's translated up to we don't need an exact graph, we just need an approximation. y equals negative x is a line, 45 degree angle going that way. Now between 0 and 1, it's pretty clear that this is the area that we're looking for, all right? and the greater function is y equals x squared plus 2. So now it's time to set up the integral. All right. That's the only thing we're looking at the graph for is which is the greater function. So the area equals the integral between 0 and 1 of x squared plus 2, the greater function, minus negative x, the lesser function. and they both have a dx. dx is always very important to make sure that you have your dx is in the right spot. So let's take a quick look at if we were to integrate this. I got x squared, so that's x cubed over three. And then minus negative x, that's plus x. So integrate that, that's plus x squared over 2. And then the plus 2 is just plus 2x. You don't have to rearrange the items. It For me, it's just a habit to make sure that my result is in descending order. But if you wanted to just integrate straight across, 
you could do x squared over 3 plus 2x plus x squared over 2. You'll get the same answer between 0 and 1. Now I'm going to plug in 1 and I get 1 third plus 1 half plus 2. Plug in 0, I get 0 plus 0 plus 0. So that's minus 0. 1 third plus 1 half plus 2 gives me 17 over 6. And that is the area in between the two curves. All right. So there's our first one, and that's pretty straightforward. This is a pretty standard one to get when you're starting out because it has both functions and it clearly tells you where you're looking. Now, if we want to take this to the next level, I'll show you the next example where the limits of integration aren't necessarily explicitly said. All right, so here it is. Find the area bounded by the graphs, 2 minus x squared, and just plain old x. All right, so the limits of integration aren't explicitly said. However, if we do a quick graph... All right, and again, I'm not doing an exact graph. I'm just doing an approximation to get a feel for where we're at. But what I notice is, is that these two graphs intersect at two spots. Now, if basically I'm saying find the area bounded by these two graphs, right, the intention is to find the area right there. We all agree? Good. So realistically, what I now need to do is find the two exact spots where these two graphs intersect, and those are going to be my limits of integration. So I'm going to do that by setting the two graphs equal to each other. So I have 2 minus x squared equals x, and now I need to bring everything to one side. So I have x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. Right, and now we can factor, so I get x plus 2, x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 2, x equals 1. All right, so there are my limits of integration. So even though they weren't explicitly said in the problem, they were contained in the idea that if, the gra if we're getting the area in bounded by the graphs, right, they have to have intersection points. Now the graph also gave us one other idea, the idea that 2 minus x squared is our greater function because it's higher on the y-axis. So when I set up my integral, say area equals the integral from negative 2 to 1 of 2 minus x squared, and I'm subtracting my lower function which is this plain old x, dx. All right, so now I'm going to do the integral. So I have, I'm going to integrate straight across now for you guys. So 2 becomes 2x minus x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2. And that is between negative 2 and 1. All right, so you guys are experts at this by now. Let's execute the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Plug in the upper limit, get a number, plug in the lower limit, get a number, and then subtract the two. And uh, we'll correlate our answers on the back end. All right, hopefully you pause the video to execute the first fundamental theorem of calculus. My final answer was nine halves. If you did not get nine halves, I would suggest you check your work. All right, so I wouldn't be me unless we went out of the realm of polynomials and we went into the realm of trigonometry. So let's find the area of one region bounded by
y equals sine x. And y equals cosine x. Now, sine x and cosine x, we all know that they go on and on and on. But what this problem is asking you, because it's asking for just the area of one region, let's just make a quick graph once again. So sine starts at 0, 2, 2, 3, and 4. And it goes... So let's see, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And this takes a little bit more. But when you're just starting out, making the graph really helps. So the sine graph goes up here, then down here. And these aren't all that difficult graphs to make. I expect that you've made plenty of these before. There you go, and there you go. And now your cosine graph starts up here. here I'll use, actually use a different color. And then crosses at pi over 2, and then down to pi, then up, and up. So it goes... Right? So what we notice is, is that now I have one region closed off, right? So, right, this is sine x. And down here, this is cosine x. And my region, use a different color, is right here. Now, is there another region forming? Absolutely. So right now, in this region, sine x is my greater function, cosine x is my lesser function. This region that's forming over here, my greater function is what? Is cosine x, my lesser function is sine x. Does it matter which region you choose? No. But the problem is only asking for the area of one region. All right, so I'm going to choose the one that's already been formed rather than continue my graph. So we need to find out the exact spots where these two graphs cross. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do the exact same way. I'm going to say sine x equals cosine x, right? And if I divide both sides by cosine x, I get sine x over cosine x, right? Divide cosine x by cosine x, I get 1. So what basically that's saying is, where does the tangent of x equal 1? Well, it equals 1 at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. All right, and there, once again, are your limits of integration. So if I'm going to integrate from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4, my greater function is sine x. My lesser function is cosine x. And always that dx is in there. So now again, the integration of trig functions sometimes is confusing. So if I'm going to integrate sine x, I want to know what function has a derivative of sine x, right? And that's, the, that's my answer. So that is negative cosine x. If I do the derivative of negative cosine x, I'll get back to sine x. And then what function has a derivative of cosine x? That would be sine x. And again, that's in between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. All right. So again, I'm going to ask you to finish this up for me. Plug in 5 pi over 4 into both, get a number. Plug in negative pi over 4 into, or plug in pi over 4, excuse me, into both, get a number. And let's see if our numbers match up. Or I'll see you back on the back end. All right. So hopefully you paused the video and you worked out the first fundamental theorem. 
I got an answer of 2 radical 2, and that should have been your answer as well. All right, so we have one more problem to go. So let's set up the next example. All right, so here's our last example. This one's interesting because we have our first function with a cube in it. So it's find the area of the region lying between the graphs, f of x equals 3x cubed, minus x squared, minus 10x, and negative x squared plus 2x. Now, the first thing I would do, again, is we got to sketch the graph. Now, this graph is a little more difficult to sketch. So you might need to use a table of values. You might need to use, you know, things like your x and y intercepts. You need to use a lot of the skills that you've acquired all the way up until this point. All right. So I'm going to quickly sketch these graphs. And again, this is by far not exact, but it's going to be a good idea of what we're working with. So there's negative one. There's one. I'm going to scroll up a little bit so I have a little extra room down there. It starts like way down here. And f of x is going to go all the way up and then come down then go all the way down and then up something like this and then g of x is going to again it's going to start down here and it's going to go to there and then it's going to go like that all right so here is f of x and here is g of x now what's unique about this problem is is that right up until zero right this area f of x is our greater function after zero meaning over here g of x is our greater function you see how g of x actually becomes the greater function so this is going to be a problem well, not that big a problem. It's just a matter of where our graphs cross. So I'm going to set it up the same way I've set up all the other ones. So I have 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x equals negative x squared plus 2x. All right, you guys by now are becoming experts. So why don't you pause the video? and take a run at finding out where these graphs cross. One of them, based on our graph, should be around zero. All right, so I'm not gonna necessarily do every step, but if we bring everything to one side, I wound up with three x cubed. The x squareds actually go away if you add x squared to both sides. And then if you subtract 2x, I get minus 12x equals 0. Then I will factor out my 3x, and I get x squared minus 4. So I get 3x times x plus 2, x minus 2. And then so I know that x equals 0, x equals negative 2, x equals 2. So I can go back to the graph. And I know that this spot here is where they cross is negative 2. And this spot where they cross is positive 2. So it seems like I have some limits of integration. So I'm going to start setting it up symbolically. So I have my area equals the integral from negative 2 to 0. Now my greater function here is f of x. So I'm going to set it up this way. Then I'm going to add to that, right? Because if I do this area, right here, if I do this area, right, up to zero, and then I do this area between zero and two, I've got to add them together to get the area in between the two curves. It only makes sense that you have to add them. All right, so I'm going to add, and I'm going to say between zero and two, now my functions switch. We noticed that here, g of x is my greater function, 
and f of x was my lesser function. All right, so I'm going to integrate from negative 2 to 0, and I'm going to do f of x minus g of x, which wound up being, you can check my work, 3x cubed minus 12x. And then I'm going to add that to the integral from 0 to 2 of, and again, you can check, you're welcome to check my work, negative 3x cubed plus 12x. But these are the two things we're integrating. All right, so when we integrate, I get 3 fourths x to the fourth minus 6x squared, and that's between negative 2 and 0. And I'm going to add that to negative 3x to the fourth over 4 plus 6x squared from 0 to 2. All right, once again, now we have to execute the first fundamental theorem of calculus twice. Now, this will be difficult only because people try to do it all at once. My suggestion, here, I'm, I'm just going to use my highlighter real quick. Give me a second. So I'm going to separate these two right here. I want you to do the first fundamental theorem here, then the first fundamental theorem here, and then you're going to add up the two. All right? Don't try to do everything all at once. It's just too much. All right? Um, we'll try to correlate our answers when you're done. All right, so I'll see you back in just a minute. All right, so hopefully you were able to plug in. Like, so let's take a quick look. If I plugged in zero, I get zero. That's great. So then I just had to plug in negative two, right? So minus negative two. And then here I plug in two and I zero equals zero. So I got an answer of, 24. All right, you are welcome to check my work. It is the right answer. If you did not get 24, my suggestion would be to go back and try to take a look for any errors. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'll see you again soon and lots more practice to go, but here's a good start on area in between two curves.